In this video, we are going to be recording some vocals. So this is really exciting because I know this is what a lot of people uh, will want to get into. If you've had some experience of recording guitars and things like that, it can be very useful to start recording your voice. You will learn loads. The equipment we'll need is firstly a condenser microphone. So a condenser microphone has a big diaphragm which colours the voice in a really nice way when it captures it. So this is the type of microphone we want. They'll often have a shock mount as well. And these look different to dynamic microphones which are like an SM58 or any kind of live microphone. Um, another one that I wanted to show you as an example is this SE Electronics SE2200A which I bought 15 years ago or something like that and this has sounded fantastic as well. This is a RED5 microphone but I just wanted to show you that these are the same type of microphone, they're both condenser microphones, big diaphragm and uh, they're very different to, you know, they're not meant to be held in the hand and sang like this. You're going to get nothing from here and that's something to be aware of with every microphone, especially when we get into studio land. You know, some microphones record fine from here or here some the the newer ones that are used for kind of podcasting and stuff they look like this but they're actually you know um the polar pattern is from the top so for this one you need the uh any of the dials facing you and that's the si side that's going to sound really good um the other thing that we're going to need as well as a mic stand and a shock mount and the lead going into my focus right again is a pop shield because if i use my lapel microphone and now I go like this, pop. It probably sounds really bad. I can't tell because I'm not monitoring at the moment. But uh, what we need is a shield to literally stop the that from just spiking on the recording. So if I do this, it won't sound very good because it's in the hand, but if I go pop, 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 Hopefully the pop shield there was working and it was stopping that. Of course, this all microphones don't sound very good in the hand, so we do need microphone stands and we do need a pop shield. Um, we want to be around this far away from the microphone, so around about five or six inches, but whatever your hand span is, that's how far we want to be away. We attach the pop shield like so. We put it there and suddenly we feel like Mariah Carey in the studio. Um, but this is this is what we need and it also enables us to keep that good distance away from the microphone We always want to be about there. Um, I've created a track. This is uh, one of the vocal tracks So I'm going to use a voice preset on it. Let's just start with classic vocal um, All of this is editable, but it, every one of these does just give a different preset here but we have EQ that we can use and we can really dig into exactly what we're going to do and all that kind of thing. Everything is editable, but we also have echo if we want it or we can turn it off. We have types of reverb here that are ready to go and the signal chain is already done for you. So it start, starts off with compression, then goes to EQ, then goes to effects sends. If you're using something other than GarageBand, you want to do that same process, but you'll have to add those plugins manually. So you need a bit more experience and knowledge to be able to do that. GarageBand, nice and plug and play. I'm going to jump on headphones. As we've said previously, um, if I'm hearing the sound while we're recording from the speakers, the microphone's going to pick it up as well. Anytime we have a microphone, that's what's going to happen. One thing that I'm going to have to do before I start singing is check the gain. So what I'm going to do is sing a little bit of the song. You left me, never even said goodbye. So it's a little hot. I'll turn it down. But really, I'm going to be singing. Sometimes you get lonely in the middle of the night. And you can see on the metering there, we're just hitting the yellows, but we're pretty much all in green. And I'm nowhere near the reds on the focus right. And that's what we want. This is probably going to, just as a test, la 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 la. One, two, three, four. That is a good signal level um, and you can see compared to the acoustic guitar mic we're, we're in and around where we want to be. If that was spiking that's no good, it would sound distorted. Let's hit a round of this and then let's give it a whirl, let's see what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes you get lonely in the middle of the night. No one there for you. Nothing left to fight. Sometimes you get lonely in the middle of the night. Though you I cannot see. I know you're watching over me. Uh, let me have a listen back to that. Because everything sounds different while you're actually doing it. And the other thing I'm going to remind you of is mastering. Um, because we can enable, I'll talk about this later, but stick your limiter to about half. That's going to just boost it a little. You put a little bit of compression. This so this is so that we really hear the details of what we just recorded and hear the mix a bit more full. You can turn these off at any time so you can really tell what they're doing. But yeah, hit those on so we can really hear it. First things first, horrendous. Let's take all of this reverb off. That is not that is not sounding good. Sometimes you get lonely in the middle of the night. No one there for you. Nothing left to find. Sometimes that doesn't need to be like that. In the middle of the night. Though you I cannot see. I know you're watching over me. Okay, so I did a few things there just to kind of balance it in the mix a little bit more. A little bit more reverb needed, but I also want to add more reverb on the acoustic mic as well, because those... Thing with reverbs, when you're using reverbs in recording software, what you're trying to do is make everything sound like it's actually recorded in the same space. You're trying to give, make everything sound like it was recorded in the same room. And if we have one reverb on your acoustic guitar that's like really long and like, and then your uh, <laughs> other, all your other instruments are really dry, your vocals really dry, it can sound quite odd. When we get into electric guitar territory, you can have a lot more electric guitar effects on your guitar and it's not a mix, it's actually the sound of that instrument. But with this, with acoustic guitar and vocal stuff, we want to try and make sure it sounds like it's in the same room. Though you I cannot see me. That's about what I did. That's, that's about where it would be. If this was a song that I was trying to get the take for, what I would have to do is just create multiple duplicate tracks. Pause that one, do it again. Make another one. Pause those two takes, do it again. And then choose the best one, but even try and choose the best one for that section. And then I'd probably do, you know, this process. I'd, I'd get a couple of takes that are just full, like two or three just full takes, but then go back in. And if I can do a better verse alone, just record the verse. And of course, if one of these is clearly worse than the others, delete that one and then you've got, you know, it's always got a spare track. But always have at least two vocal parts because just expecting to get it right the first time is not. It's not practical. It's probably not going to happen. You want to you wanna give yourself the best opportunity for it to sound great because once you kind of export from this, it's solidified. It's going to be like that way forever. So it wants to be something that you're happy with. And multiple takes in the studio is totally fine. OK, now I'm going to give you an example of how we can add harmonies uh, to a vocal part. So the classic example of this is something like the boy band harmonies, you know, thinking take that. Extreme examples would be like the Bee Gees, where you can really clearly hear lots of uh, backing vocals. But the fact is, there are often a lot more backing vocals in a song, in any recording, than the average person actually hears. What we're looking for here is often not a super loud, super obvious harmony part. What we're doing is supporting that main vocal. And it, it can sound very nice when we have layers of vocal rather than just one exposed one. Often in pop songs, many vocals are actually double tracked. So the person will do two exactly identical or close as they can do it takes of the same part. And that's often a really interesting challenge. I know for a fact that loads of Foo Fighters songs like Learn to Fly um, have a double tracked main vocal. Um, loads of Beatles songs, especially the Beatles songs where there's just John Lennon singing, he often sang exactly the same part twice to fatten up the vocal and actually because he didn't like his voice. So he would do things to just try and support it and try and make, to make it sound better. Very difficult to do, but it's a good place to start. Let's just sing, I'm going to sing that main vocal line exactly the same as that to begin with. 
so that we're not just going for a harmony so that we can actually match that main vocal as close as possible let's have a look at how we can do that tell me, tell me the truth or say nothing at all because you shouldn't lie to her you shouldn't lie to your heart you shouldn't lie to her it'll tear you apart you shouldn't lie you shouldn't lie to her you shouldn't lie you shouldn't lie to her you shouldn't lie you shouldn't lie to your heart Okay, so not a bad take. The important thing would be that all the syllables, all the timing of everything needs to match up as close as possible. When we start doing harmonies, we'll be able to zoom in and see that. So let's go for our first harmony now. I'm gonna make a new track, just duplicate again. And I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna name it BV2, backing vocals track two. And this one, I'm gonna go, um, even a third or a fourth higher so you shouldn't lie you shouldn't lie to her you shouldn't lie to your heart that's what i'm going to be doing um i'll talk about it more afterwards let's just do i'm going to do two takes just straight off the back of the harmony we'll see why in a second because you shouldn't lie to her you shouldn't lie to your heart you shouldn't lie to her, it'll tear you apart You shouldn't lie, you shouldn't lie to her You shouldn't lie, you shouldn't lie to her You shouldn't lie, you shouldn't lie to your heart Okay, so they're not sounding bad, again, multiple takes will be better And after it's best to just Keep going, record more, save the best ones, delete any that aren't any good. I'm going to go for a lower one here. Often it's good to um, kind of have the guitar and just figure some out. So we've got... So that main melody... You shouldn't lie to her, you shouldn't lie to your heart. I'm going to go for the lower harmony. You shouldn't lie to her, you shouldn't lie to your heart. I'm gonna go for that one. Tell me the truth or say nothing. Gonna keep that pitch in my mind. Because you shouldn't lie to her, you shouldn't lie to your heart. You shouldn't lie to her, it'll tear you apart. You shouldn't lie. You shouldn't lie to her, you shouldn't lie. You shouldn't lie to her, you shouldn't lie. You shouldn't lie to your heart. So that's our lower harmony part. What I'm going to do is turn all the backing vocals down by about 6 dB. 6 decibels in recording software tends to perceivably be about half the volume. So I've just turned all of these down by about half. What we're going to do to add a bit more production to it, a bit more audible excitement, is pan each of the backing vocals that we did twice. So the same part, one of them left and one of them right. Now often what happens is actually backing vocals, I don't like them to sound very bassy. So I'm going to take down those and add a low cut to make sure that these backing vocals aren't fighting for the same space as the higher vocal. Let's just listen to how all those backing vocals sound, just the backing vocals. You shouldn't lie to her, you shouldn't lie to your heart. So they're matching up fairly well. You shouldn't lie to her, it'll tear you apart. I always love the sound of backing vocals on their own. Uh, and then the whole thing with, um, with the guitar part as well. And the main vocal. Because you shouldn't lie to her, you shouldn't lie to your heart. You shouldn't lie to her, it'll tear you apart. That is that produced kind of backing vocal quality. Now, one thing I have tried to do a little bit there, and I would do it more with more time. 
I've tried to soften my backing vocals, so make it a little bit more warm and breathy. You shouldn't lie to her, you shouldn't lie to your heart, rather than, you shouldn't lie to her, you shouldn't, you know, rather than just saying it. You're trying to really fatten out your breathy sound, because that's what you're trying to do, that's, that's the goal of adding the backing vocals in the first place. So hopefully there are some tips. None of that can happen without a little bit of knowledge of harmony and how backing vocals work over chords. So you can't just go a third apart all the time. It's got to work with the chord that's underneath. But practicing with that is literally just a case of kind of finding it on the guitar, singing it in your head, and then trying not to keep getting pulled back to the main melody, trying to go for a specific harmony. Learn other songs. If, if you haven't ever done this, just try and recreate a song that has a strong harmony part and you'll, you'll, you'll get it eventually. It's, it's such a good exercise. Hope that really helps.